hello everyone today i would like to show you how you can be able to enable wireless communication between two arduino boards using the nrf 24l01 rf module so for example in this case what i'm going to be doing today we simply be using one board to control the lighting of the leds on the other board now this is done wirelessly using radio frequency determined by this rf module here so we have two of them, one for acting as a transmitter, another one acting as the receiver. If I can show you how this really works, let me first look at this device closely. So this is the NRF 24 one RF module. Of course the first thing you discover is like it's really small and cheap. Actually you can get one of these for less than a dollar, which makes it very easy to include in a number of projects where you need to have various communication. Okay, the first thing you observe is has an onboard antenna. And there is another version which uses an external IPX antenna. So this one, the onboard antenna is good if you are going to have projects which are in a rather compact space. But the problem is that it is limited in the range of transmission. So this kind of module will have a transmission range of around 100 meters. However, if you are using the one with an external antenna, it can have a range of almost 1000 meters. So this operates at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and uses DFSK modulation for data transmission. So it means you can transmit data in different rates. So you can either use 250 kilobytes, 1 megabyte or 2 MBs of data transmission. Then the other advantage of this module is the low power consumption. It operates at 1.9 to 3.6 voltage, but the, the pins, as you can see these other pins, they are 12 to 5 volts. Therefore, you can easily connect it to a microcontroller using 5 volts like the Arduino. And the good thing is that when it is transmitting data, it uses around 12 milliamps. That is rather small, it is even smaller than an LED. So so it means its power consumption is really low. So it's favorite to be used in projects including low power circuits. Let me try to show you the pin configuration. The first pin here, which is the reference pin, as you can see, it is reference because it has that rectangle. That is the ground pin. It'll be connected to the ground of the Arduino that you are going to be using. Then on this other side, that is the VCC. We connect it to the 3.3 volts of Arduino. You should keep that in mind. Don't connect it to the 5 volts. Otherwise, we'll be spoiling the RF module. Then this other pin is what we call the chip enable and is an active high pin and this determines whether the module is transmitting or receiving data depending on the state of this pin. Let me go to this other one. This other side we have the chip select node pin which is an active low pin but it's normally kept high so that when it is low then we are listening to the SPI port of the module so that we can be able to transfer data. This other pin is the serial clock pin which is for receiving clock pulses from the SPI bus master. Then this one is the more C or what we call the master out slave in, which is the SPI input to the module. This other one is the MISO. So the MISO is for the SPI output to the module. And lastly, this other pin here is the interrupt pin. And in this case, we are not really going to be using this interrupt pin. So we are mainly going to be using seven pins. Okay, let me now show you how this is connected to the Arduino boards and how we do the coding. So this is the setup you're going to be using. I'm having two Arduino boards. I'm having a blue one and a green one. So I'm going to be using the blue board as my transmitter and then the green board as my receiver. So for the transmitter, I'm going to include two push buttons, one and two. And then for the receiver, I'm going to have two LEDs. In other words, what I want this system to do is that whenever I press one of the buttons here on the transmitter, then the LED on the receiver is going to light. Of course, the RF modules will be connected in the same way that I've already talked about. Yeah, maybe one thing I have to emphasize here is that the power, the power supply maybe for the RF module board should be connected to 3.3 volts so that you know, don't connect it to the 5 volts because it may be spoiled. Now let me have a simple look at the kind of code that we are going to be using so that we can be able to enable communication for these boards here. So this is the code we are going to be using to run our communication system. Remember I'm using two Arduino boards. One is acting as our transmitter. Another one is acting as the receiver. So as you can see, I'm going to be having two pieces of code. One for the transmitter, another one for the receiver. But they are almost the same because the connection, remember, is almost the same. We just change a few aspects depending on which type of code that you are looking at.
the first part in both cases is going to be the libraries that you are going to be including the first is the spi.h library for controlling the spi communication that we are going to be using here then you have these other two libraries the nrf 24l01.h and then the rf 24.h these ones are for controlling the wireless rf module that you are using so in the transmitter part we are going to be defining the buttons because in the transmitter you're having the buttons so we are going to be having two buttons one is going to be on pin 3 another one on pin 5 while for the receiver we are going to be having two leds but these leds are connected them to the analog part so one is going to be on analog pin a0 and the other one is on analog pin a1 the initial state of the button is going to be zero so we create an rf24 object and this object has two arguments which will be for the chip enable and the chip select not pins so in my case those pins are attached to digital pin 9 and 8 which is the same in all cases then i'm going to create a byte array for the address or what you call the pipe through which the two modules communicate so this address can be any five letter string in my case it is 00002 this address has to be the same in all cases because the modules can be able to identify themselves correctly so in the setup declare the buttons as inputs but remember in this case you're using the internal pull up resistors for the buttons or the leds are going to be declared as outputs the major part i want to talk about here is here we are going to be initializing the radio object for the transmitter using open right pipe and then the address and here we, we are initializing the radio object for the receiver then this other function here it is for setting the power amplifier level we have four levels we have the minimum we have the low we have the high and then the maximum but in this case i'm using the minimum because our modules are very close this other function stop listening is for setting the module as a transmitter while in this case here we discover that here we are having start listening this one sets the module as a receiver so in the loop function we are going to be reading the state of the pressed buttons using the digital read and then use the radio dot write function for sending messages to the receiver so this other symbol indicates the variable that stores the data to be sent in this case i have two variables there's one we call the button state one and then the button state two the size of function means that you are going to get all the bytes in the button state variable and then you are going to be sending them to the receiver so we discover in the receiver part of the code so we have the variable radio dot variable this one will check whether there is any data to be received and if that is true then you are going to read and store that data in the button state variable then this button state variable is going to be used to state to change the state of the led so depending on the state of the button the led can either be high or low and remember i have two buttons so in that case when you press the first button the first led will light if you press the second button the second led will light you can upload the transmitter code to the transmitter board in my case i'm using the blue board as my transmitter and then the receiver code is going to be uploaded to the receiver board which is the green one then after that i'll be able to show you how this works let's try it out and see okay now after uploading the code you can now try it out and see if it works so when you press one button here on the transmitter you discover the led on the receiver lights I press another one here on the transmitter another led on the receiver lights okay so that is the way how the system is working okay so that is the simple starter tutorial on how to use these rf modules and this knowledge can be used in controlling a variety of systems i'll be doing more examples on how to use this kind of rf modules to control different devices wirelessly so hope you have learned something new today don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like my video and also to watch my other tutorials thanks for watching